Hello, my friends. Uh, I want to cover something because of the response that I've seen. Um, now, as anybody probably knows, in, in America, you had the Silicon Valley Bank collapse, basically, on Friday. Which, this bank, if anybody doesn't know what they are, they're a bank that does riskier kind of loans. Um, they did a lot with cryptocurrency, a lot with tech startup companies, all kind of different places that they would give money and invest in um, to things that were a little riskier. So whenever this started to collapse, you got to understand right away that 89% of the people that, that are holding money in that bank have more than $250,000 in it. That means this isn't your average ma and pa, this isn't Sam and Joe. These are corporations, companies that store their money in this bank most of the time for payroll. So if you have this bank collapse, you're losing 100,000 workers, 200,000 workers, whatever it is. Um, all of a sudden, the places can't pay them. These tech companies can't pay their workers because they can't get payroll out of the bank. So that's the biggest piece of this. You go from you know, having a whole bunch of people hired, a bunch of smaller businesses, to broken down to nothing, all gone virtually overnight because they can't pay anybody. That's, that's the bigger piece of this. And of course it's happening in California because California, uh, it's basically like reliving the days of Nineveh, as I've explained this before. Before the Lord comes, one thing after the next, desolation, desolation, destruction, any kind of great peril that you can think about, you're going to see it happen and already have seen it happen in California to some extent. And, and the, you can tell what it is um, because, the, you know, they'll go from a foot of snow to flooding uh, to hot to you go from a drought to a flood in the same year you, you've got to understand something specifically is happening to california and that's why i liken it to nineveh um will will they listen by the time the prophet comes before they go off into the ocean i don't know but we'll see what kind of plays out with all of that um, whether we see that play out or not even i, I don't even know but it's just kind of speculating on the future of california um, but anyway, back to this bank and back to the people's responses of it. Now, I, I've been on here for, on this channel, I think for three years or so, just speaking the things that I've come to know to speak, um, some things I'll rant about, some things I'm trying to learn so I talk about it, some things I see so I just pour it out there for anybody who has the ears to hear what I, what I say can understand what I'm saying because... I don't lie to anybody about anything. I, I'm, I'm real. I tell you exactly as I see it. If I'm wrong about something, I'll tell you I'm wrong about it. But the time that I'm telling you about it, I, I believe it to be true. I don't, I don't ever intentionally sin by lying to you. Whatever I say is exactly what I believe. Um, and that's how all people who walk with God are. We're all real. You're not gonna, you're not gonna catch us being unreal about something that we're experiencing. There's a lot of people out there who come in hypocrisy, who come in fakeness. But to the people who actually know God, we have been molded over the last several years to tell each other apart. Um, I can completely disagree with what somebody maybe is saying uh, about particular scriptures or what something means or what something's coming. I can disagree with, with people on that. Um, but when I understand that they're being passionate and that they're led to see something, the same as I'm led to see something... Um, I, I will understand that they're real, and, and, and I'm not going to you know, sit there and criticize them for being wrong about something, because they're also going to be the first people that are tell you they're wrong. And what I see happening with these banks is you have a whole bunch of people put into management who made a lot of wrong decisions, bad decisions on things, um, especially with the COVID money when they had the influx of all that come in. Now, when these people do something wrong... Um, do they come out and, and admit to those things that you see the body of Christ do? If we do or say something wrong, do you, do you see these kind of corporations and peoples coming out and saying that they're doing something wrong? No, what you had was, the, was Janet Yellen come on and say, we're not going to bail this bank out. And then from the overwhelming social media response of people saying, hey, we're all going to pull our money out if you don't in, take care of this insurance that we have. Then they decide, well, we're going we're gonna to make sure that everybody that has over $250,000, we are going to make sure that they have that money. So they are bailing out the bank um, because people made wrong decisions, made 
wrong things happen, one wrong decision leading to a wrong result, leading to something else wrong, and what's the one thing that none of them do? Reflect on that. Repent on that. Understand why things happen such as they did. You'll never see a single one of these people do that. And that is really a, a huge separation between somebody who walks with God and somebody who does not walk with God. The world and children of God, people of God. Biggest difference between the two is that one, when they're wrong about something, they'll tell you they're wrong about it after they've found out about being wrong about it. <laughs> And the other will double down on being wrong and look for something in the world to excuse them, to pay their tab, to bail them out for it, to be their mommy and daddy, to be their God. So thus, all of this uproar that came over the bank, what's the first thing they do? The government then has to step in and bail them out because that's just like your father in heaven bailing you out for the sin that you've done. Your father in heaven will hide your sin too. But your father in heaven is who does it. Their father is the government, is not the father in heaven, but Satan, the god of mammon, that is their father. Which leads me back to the whole point of California being looking just like Nineveh probably looked like. I can say probably because the scriptures really don't say exactly what was going on there. But you can kind of reason with how things worked out, why things happened there, if you know the word. And you look at the whole church of God, and by church I'm speaking very broadly. I'm speaking anybody who claims to be a Christian, who follows God in any sense of the word at all. That's the church that I'm speaking of right now, the very broad form of the church. Um, you have all different kinds of this people on YouTube and... They, they have their ministries in the world and they have missionaries and they do all these different kind of things. And they will sit there and they will preach a sermon to you with sweat pouring down their face, um, full of passion with whatever understanding God has given them of his word. They will pour out that sermon and you as a child of God will listen to them and say, well, I can understand certain things about that. I recognize that. That is my father's voice. I hear it. But then in a very end of that sentence that they'll speak with passion. They'll ask you to donate. They'll ask you to subscribe. They'll ask you to click. They'll ask you for, to go to Patreon. They'll ask you to, I don't know, invest in gold and silver. Or they'll, they'll ask you to watch an advertisement, whether they ask it or not. If they put them on their page, they're, they're advertising and monetizing their, their channel. They'll ask all of these things of you right after speaking about God. And what does Jesus say of this? Well, Jesus said, you cannot love God and money. You cannot love God and mammon. One and the same thing, money is a form of a God. And you see the world and how they interact with money. They love it. I mean, people love money. Look at the outroar that's coming from these banks collapsing. Look at the outroar and the panic and the fear. And yet I, I could sit in front of any one of them and tell them that, imminently speaking, from our perspective, Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth and everything in this earth is like a glass house that you live in. I can tell them that right now, then in the face, and believe it because I know it to be true. And they wouldn't care a thing about it. So they show their love and what they love, money. But who does God work with first? His own house. Do these people that I speak about, do they have a knowledge of God, an understanding of God, some type of love for God? Yes, absolutely they do. So what's God going to do to purify these ones who right now think they can both love God and money and that God is providing them money for these things that they can build themselves up with? What, what, what is God going to bring in that form of judgment to them? He's going to give you all the money in the world, which is what we've lived in in Western civilization, and then he's going to take it all from you. And he's going to test the hearts of those who claim to love him, at the same time profit off of him, whether they actually do love him or not. And for many, when that comes, they will fall away from him. And you can say, well, God blessed people with money all throughout the Bible. Absolutely, and God has blessed me with money. In my life, I have been poor, and I have been wealthy, and I have been in between. I've been all three, all three places. And you know what I can tell you of money? In the society, culture we live in, it's a way of life for us. It has been for, for people for 
I don't probably forever in some form or another. There was always some form of bartering that was happening. You always had wealthy, and you always had non-wealthy, and you always had people in the middle. You've always had this all throughout human history. Nothing is new under the sun. But when I have a lot of money, I'm praising God because I'm blessed with what I have. When I have no money, I'm praising God because... I know that when I come to the point where I've got absolutely no way to, to feed my kids or to do anything in this world, that he will find some way to give it to me. When I have, I don't know, the Goldilocks amount of money, you could call it middle class money, I guess, if such a thing even exists anymore. I'm praising God because he has given me all the things in the world that I need without ever having the desire to go and steal. So I'm praising God whether I got nothing, whether I got a lot, or whether I got just enough. Somebody who loves God, who is God-centered, that is their form of thinking. I don't need to profit off of my word of God that I can speak. I don't need to, to profit anything off of it. I just want to talk about it because I love God. That's, that's my focus. I don't need any money out of that from Him. That's like, you know, going out with your spouse and you hold separate checking accounts, and when you go out to eat, you tell your spouse to pay for dinner. Does that make any sense to anybody? You're married. You're co-equal. I, I, don't, I don't need to have my spouse give me money or pay for me in some way. We share that equally. That's the same for people of God. We don't look to God to profit off of the Word or our understanding or our knowledge because there's a lot of profit to be had out there from it. But some of these people, even for a nickel, they will profit off of it and still call it something because that's the love of money. And whether it's a billion dollars or a nickel, people who love money love both equally and cannot stand to let either one of them go, whether it be a billion dollars or a nickel. People can't stand to depart with either who love money. And I see the people of God fall into this pit where their love of money, at the same time their love of God, God's bringing it full front and center, where on this day you will choose it or me. You will choose money or you will choose God. God is going to bring it to that point in judgment, and you're going to watch it play out if we are still here to witness that. Where all of these people who are trying to serve both God and money making profits off of the things God gives them, to give freely to others as He gave freely to them. Anyone who does that within the house of God, that money changer table is going to be turned over, meaning they're going to lose every single bit of what they love, that money. And after they lose all that money, will they then look to God and still love Him? Or will they curse His name in their attempt to gather back what they've lost? and do it right at the expense of their own soul. If I tell you Jesus Christ is coming back, say I know for certain that tonight at 9 p.m. Jesus Christ is coming back, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, United States of America. Say I know that for certain. Say I was given a vision of that, and I spoke to Jesus Christ. I met him. He sat me down and said, Tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern USA time, I will appear over the whole world and I will take you up with me. Do you really believe if, if I really did know that and I went up to everybody walking on the street and I said that to people, Hey, 9 p.m. tonight, Jesus Christ is coming back. What kind of a response do you think I would get out of that? I'd get nothing. I'd probably end up locked up or thrown in a mental institution by the end of the day, even if that was true and that actually happened to me. But if I walk down the street and I bump into somebody and I say, hey, did you hear that uh, the bank down the street is closing up and that there's a run on the money? And if you don't get to that bank right now, you're not going to be able to access your account. Do you think I'd get a response out of that person? Well, that person would probably push me out of the way to go to the ATM on the way by. I'd get a response out of that because this generation of people loves money more than it ever thought about loving God. And for that very reason is why God's going to make them poor. He's going to take it all from them to test their hearts whom it is they actually desire. The God of mammon, money, or the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ.
the Father in heaven, which one will they choose on this day? That is the judgment that is coming on this world. In the dream that I had where I knew Donald Trump was going to be president, specifically in that dream, I had a, a, a walk, walking to the ATM I was going, and I saw a big sign, the ATM closes at 5 o'clock. I knew from that moment on that there was going to come a point in time where people will go to the ATM and it will not be working. People will go to their banks and it will not give them any money. People will go to the teller and they will be dismissed. The police will be called on them like they have been in France and some other places. That time is coming. And it's going to come to the house of God first. And then throughout the whole world. And the whole world, we already know their response. They're going to do anything they can to try to hold on to that nickel. But what will the house of God do? Will they still try to hold on to that nickel? Or will they drop to their knees and say, Lord, I have nothing. Provide for me. Because I can't do it. I, I have no way to make it. Nobody has any money. Nobody has any stuff. I can't barter. I can't do anything. Lord, my fate is in your hands. Whatever you give me is what I have. Will this people do that in this generation? Some day, and some day soon, on that very day, they will choose whom they serve. And that day is coming quickly. God bless.